Hi learners! I am Francis Serrano, your student teacher for today. I will be teaching physical science with the topic, Models of the Universe. Everybody, please stand up and let us pray. Let us feel the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now that we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good day, class! Okay, you may now take your seats. Okay, Miss Secretary, are there any absentees for today? Great! It's good to know that all of you are present today. Now, I will request the class president to collect all your notebooks and check your assignments. Alright class, before we proceed to our lesson, we will first review what we've discussed in our last topic. I will read some statements and you will identify what is being referred to in these statements. Is that clear class? Again, what was our last topic about? Yes, that's right, class, about the five main phases of the moon. Okay, let's start. Okay, first question. It is a phase when the moon is directly between the sun and the earth, making the moon hardly visible. All right, very good, class. It's new moon. Next is, it is a phase when the moon appears as a complete bright circular disk in the night sky. That's correct, class. It's full moon. Okay, next is, it is a phase between the crescent moon and gibbous moon and is commonly known as the half moon. Yes, very good class. It's quarter moon. Now, let's begin with our next lesson, shall we? But before that, I prepared here a motivation activity. I believe everyone's already familiar with the solar system, right? Our activity entitled... Which is which? Here, you will identify the names of the planets in our solar system according to their proper order. I will give, you, I will give a clue for each planet to help you recognize what is being described. Okay, as we all know, the sun is in the center of our solar system. Now, let's check if you can recall the planets in correct sequence. The first one is, it's the planet closest to the sun. What is it? Yes, Edri? That's right. It's Mercury. Next, it's a planet named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. Yes, Andre? Very good. It's Venus. Next, it is the third planet from the sun on which we live in. Yes, Aaron? Very good. It's Earth, which is our own planet. Next, it is often referred to as the Red Planet. Yes, Diane? Excellent! It's Mars, the fourth planet from the Sun. Next, it is the largest planet in the solar system. Yes, Angela? Great! It's Jupiter, the fifth planet from the sun. Next, it is a planet called the ring planet, wherein its rings are made up of bits of ice, dust, and rocks. Yes, Mark? It's correct. That's 
Saturn, the sixth planet from the Sun. Okay, next, it is an ice giant planet and named with reference to the Greek god of the sky. Yes, Gem? Correct. That's Uranus, the seventh planet from the sun. And lastly, it is the farthest known planet and also the windiest and coldest in the solar system. Yes, Rufa? Very good! It's Neptune, the eighth planet from the Sun. Class, I'm glad that you all still remember. Teaching and learning without goals are impossible in the education process. So, these are the objectives of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, the student should be able to first, explain and compare the geocentric and heliocentric models respectively. Second, enumerate and enumerate the respective proponents of these two models of the universe. And the third one, describe the shift from the geocentric model to the heliocentric model of the universe. Now, I have here an activity entitled side by side. Let's examine and compare the two figures in the image. Class, what do you notice in the photo? Great observation, class. So the model on the left has the Earth in the center with the planets, the moon, and the sun circle around it. How about the figure on the right? Very good, class. So the sun appears to be in the center with all the planets and the moon revolve around it. The earth also seems to revolve and rotate while the moon orbits it. Class, the first model on the left is called the geocentric model or, or an earth-centered model. Whereas the second model on the right is called the heliocentric model or a sun-centered model. Now, we are going to investigate how these two concepts come about and who were the proponents of behind these models of the universe. Okay, at this point, I will show you a video presentation entitled, Now Showing. It's about the concepts of what the universe looks like in the ancient times, our changing view of the universe and how the human conception of the universe has changed fundamentally over the past 2,500 years. Class, I will group you into two groups and you will choose one spokesperson for your respective group. An envelope containing manila paper, a marker, and an adhesive tape will be given for every group. And this will be for group one and this will be for group two. I will let you write down notes as you watch the video. Afterwards, I will give you five minutes to gather all your members' observations, talk about and make illustrations, and then a representative speaker will present it in front of the class. Before we proceed, let, let us recall the guidelines in watching and listening to a video presentation and then doing the activity as a group. Can you give me the first rule? That's right. So we have to keep quiet and listen attentively. What else? All right, so be cooperative, show respect to your group mates, don't disturb the other group, and follow the directions carefully. Everything's clear. Let us now begin. That's the end of the video. You may now start doing the activity. Time's up. You may now post your works on the board. Now for group one, what can you say about your activity? Very good. 
And for group 2, what can you say about your activity? Excellent! Now, for group 1, what do you call the apparent daily motion of the celestial objects across the sky from daytime to nighttime? Yes, that's correct. It's called diurnal motion. It's when celestial bodies, including the stars, planets, the moon, and the sun, appear to move across the sky each day. And who were the three Greek proponents of the geocentric model of the universe? Excellent! Very well said. So first is Plato, a philosopher and mathematician, Next is Aristotle, a famous philosopher, and the third one is Claudius Ptolemy, an astronomer and mathematician. The three of them were able to formulate a fairly good functioning model of the universe, which came to be known as the geocentric model. This model, however, was largely accepted for more than 1,000 years after it was formulated by Ptolemy. And for group 2, who were the proponents of the heliocentric model of the universe? Very good. They were Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish astronomer and mathematician, who formulated a model of the universe that placed the sun rather than the earth at its center. And Galileo Galilei, an Italian astronomer, physicist, and engineer who was famous for his work with the telescope. And what does the heliocentric model say about the universe? Fantastic! So it says that in a heliocentric model, the sun, not the earth, is in the center and all the other objects orbit the sun. Also, in this model, the earth is moving in two ways. It revolves around the sun and it rotates on its axis as well. Besides, as you can imagine, the heliocentric model was quite controversial at that time because it suggested that the Earth was not perfect at all. This model, though, was eventually accepted and could not be ignored as it perfectly explained the observations we were seeing and it better predicted the motion of celestial objects. Alright, good job class. Please give yourselves a yes clap. So please all stand and let's all do it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yes! Alright, so class, there were still some issues in the heliocentric model after it was eventually accepted by the public in the past. Then came along Johannes Kepler, a German astronomer and mathematician, and Sir Isaac Newton, an English mathematician and physicist. So they both tried to solve the problems that remained with the heliocentric model. Kepler was the first astronomer to look at the shape of the planet's orbits as they were going around the sun. To this day, astronomers and the public felt that the planets moved in circular paths. However, Kepler made a rash prediction which was that planets didn't move along perfectly circular paths but rather along oval-shaped paths. These oval paths are known as ellipses. In addition to this, Kepler noted that when an object orbits a star, its speed changes. Far away, it slows down. Closer, it speeds up. These observations would further be explained by Sir Isaac Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. Ultimately, the conclusion was made which leads us to what we have today, a heliocentric model of the universe, of the solar system, in which the sun is in the center and all orbiting celestial objects travel along elliptical or oval-shaped 
pass. One more thing to note, early astronomers had no clue how vast the universe truly was. And so when they formulated a model of the universe, what they were really talking about was simply a model of our solar system. Needless to say, we have to know that the solar system is just a tiny piece of or a speck of the entire universe. Regardless, the heliocentric model has been proven true by modern technology, and we owe this to all the hard work of the early astronomers. Class, do you have any questions? Great! I believe all of you have learned from our lesson. Okay, are you ready for a quiz? I will give you five minutes to review. Are you ready, class? Are you ready, class? I have here print out of the quiz. Please pass the papers to everyone. I will give you five minutes to finish. Please get one and pass. Timer starts now. Okay, time's up. Please exchange your papers. And let us now check your answers. For number one, it's letter B. Number two, C. Number three, C. Number four, a, and number 5, D. You may now return the papers to its owners. Have any of you got a perfect score? Very good! And for our assignment, conduct an advanced reading about the next topic, which is the Kepler's loss of planetary motion. Class, is that clear? Okay. So, that concludes our lesson for today. I hope you learned a thing or two. See you in our next discussion class. Goodbye and stay safe.